in my kitchen and today I am making my upside down rhubarb cake. It is almost the end of rhubarb season, which breaks my heart, but for one last hurrah, let's make my upside down rhubarb cake. For this recipe, I am using my stand mixer, but you can also use just a good old classic bowl with an electric mixer. And that's gonna be really important for getting our egg whites nice and fluffy and light and giving them some beautiful volume. So right into our bowl, I am going to crack five, separate five egg whites. So to do this, I actually use the shells and I crack them open and then I just float the yolk between the two shells, letting the white fall out. And I'll just save my yolks for maybe making custard later on. The other way to crack your or separate your egg whites is to use your hands. So crack your egg in half and then simply very carefully <laughs> drop your yolk into your hand with slightly spread fingers and let that white gently fall out. Do whichever version feels the most comfortable to you. The only key is to avoid getting any yolk into those whites, otherwise they won't whip up properly. Give your hands a wash after touching those raw eggs. I have my stand mixer here, so I'm going to pop those egg whites right on there. And I'm using the whisk attachment. And let's just beat those eggs until they are light and fluffy. Once you have reached stiff peaks, so that means they hold their shape, like they're not going anywhere. Those are some stiff peaks. And the mixture is tripled in volume. You are good to go. I am going to transfer these beautiful whipped egg whites into a new bowl so that we can make the rest of the batter in this existing bowl. Be very careful when working with whipped egg whites because they are full of a precious, beautiful air and you don't want to crush them down. This recipe is actually a grain-free paleo recipe. I do have a standard vanilla cake recipe on my blog that you can use and um, just replace the cake part with that recipe if you just want a regular old gluten-filled cake. I am working on eating a bit less gluten and more healthy fats and fiber and protein. So this cake is perfect for that. I can make a cake and eat it too. <laughs> so for our cake batter, we need a quarter cup of coconut cream or full fat coconut milk. I'm using a can of coconut milk that I've just mixed up and that's going right into our mixer. I'm also going in with a quarter cup of room temperature butter, a quarter cup of honey, and a quarter cup of maple syrup. Let's add in a teaspoon of vanilla and about a quarter teaspoon of almond extract. Did you know almonds and rhubarb are like the perfect combination of flavors? I wouldn't lie to you. And last but not least, we need about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Not very much, just enough to brighten everything up. Grab your mixer back over. Bowl goes on to there. And we're actually gonna switch out the whisk for the paddle attachment. And let's mix that all up. Whenever you're baking and mixing things in a stand mixer, do not forget to scrape down those beautiful sides of your bowl. Once that mixture is all combined, let's add in our dry ingredients. As I mentioned, this recipe is paleo and grain free. So we are using a combination of a cup and a half of almond flour, three tablespoons of coconut flour. Coconut flour helps absorb the liquid in the cake. It's like a super duper absorbent flour when it comes to gluten-free and grain-free baking. So you often can't swap it out for anything. And three tablespoons of tapioca starch or arrowroot starch. 
They are interchangeable, but they are such an essential ingredient when it comes to paleo and grain-free baking. I actually was exclusively paleo and grain-free for quite some time, so I became very adept at grain-free baking. And since we are trying for baby, I just thought I would go back to my roots. No, <laughs> I'm just trying to um, balance my blood sugar a bit more and I find grain-free baking because a lot of the flours have a lot of protein and healthy fats. It just helps to satisfy and, blood and balance your blood sugar for longer. And last but not least, at least for this cake portion, is we need half a teaspoon of baking soda. And let's mix this up. Okay, this, is, this batter is all beaten up. Everything is very well combined, so I'm just gonna scrape down this um, attachment. That is what we call these. <laughs> oh, our super duper fluffy egg whites, and I am just going to fold these in. I have never seen Schitt's Creek, but I've seen the meme enough times of, I think it's Dan Levy's character, doesn't know how to fold things in. Well, here, here you go. Take your spatula. Go around the edge of your bowl and fold it over and cut it through. Around, fold, cut through. Around, fold, cut through. So once we're about 90 to 95% folded in, I add in the second load. And just continue that folding motion. So going around the bowl, folding over and cutting through. Tell me in the captions if you've seen Schitt's Creek. I feel like I'm definitely the minority. A lot of people have told me in my life that I need to watch it. I tried to watch it. I didn't think it was that funny. I didn't really get it. So I kind of gave up on it. <laughs> to each their own, am I right? Once all your egg whites are folded in and there's no more streaks of white or of egg whites throughout your batter, I'm just gonna set this bad boy aside and work on our rhubarb really quickly to make our rhubarb portion of the rhubarb upside down cake. For this recipe, I am using a spring form pan. So what that means is there's a bottom and there are sides and the bottom and the sides are actually detachable and then you put them back together and you magically have a pan. You can use any round or square pan that you have. I just find this makes it easiest to flip it over at the very end. But any pan will do, I promise. We're gonna start with some parchment paper. Take the bottom out if you are using a springform pan. Otherwise, just place your parchment paper inside of your pan. With the overhang of the parchment, I just set that spring form part around, nestle it in, lock it into place, and then we magically have a perfectly lined spring form pan. I'm gonna grease the edges of the pan with some butter, just to ensure that this masterpiece turns out. I don't wanna tell you how many times I have made a cake for it not to come out properly because I didn't grease the pan well enough. It mostly happens when I'm making a bundt cake, but you can never be too safe. So this is rhubarb. It's a beautiful ruby color. It's actually vegetable. It's very tart. It's in season in May and June, mostly May. And it is one of my favorite vegetables, I guess fruit. Um, for baking with because it is tart. It has so much flavor and it's in season for such a short period of time that I feel like the scarcity of that makes it just so much better, you know? I'm just trimming off the ends and then I want all the pieces to be as thin as the smallest piece so they bake evenly. So I have three thicker pieces and the rest is thin. So I'm gonna cut these thicker pieces in half. 
lengthwise. Ta-da! Traditionally, upside down cake is made with pineapple. I don't love pineapple. I am not a pineapple girly. Um, but rhubarb is totally my jam. You can make this recipe with any fruit that floats your boat, that tickles your fancy. They'll all be delicious. Depending on the fruit, you might get it to be more juicy or it might be more solid. The rhubarb is gonna be a pretty solid base because it's not the juiciest of fruits or vegetables. I actually harvested this rhubarb from our own garden yesterday, which it just makes me so happy when I can like go out into our garden and actually like pick flowers and harvest fruits and veggies. Really, I'm just living that homesteader dream. <laughs> it's a vibe. Once all of your rhubarb is about the same thickness, we are going to make a pattern with our pan. So I'm gonna cut it so that it's half of the length, half of the width of the pan. I'm just gonna start nestling this rhubarb in. So I did my pattern, I did alternating sides. Let me give you an overview. This is what we're working with. I did alternating um, directions of the rhubarb. So when we flip it over, this will be on top. So stunning. Since rhubarb is a very tart vegetable, as we learned today, I am going to sprinkle on a few tablespoons of coconut sugar. And I'm also gonna add on a few dollops of butter right onto that rhubarb to help with that caramelization of the sugars which will give you that caramel flavor and the most beautiful texture on the outside you could ever dream of. This is what we're working with. We have our rhubarb, our sugar, and our butter. Let's pour on that beautiful almondy batter right on top there. You guys, my mouth is already salivating. This is gonna be a good one. And then just carefully spread that batter out into one even layer. Look how beautiful that already looks. We're gonna bake it at 325. And as always, I will put the full recipe in the caption below. The cake is out of the oven. I have been letting it cool for maybe an hour and let's see how it turned out. So we're gonna flip it over while it's still all sealed up. So grab a plate, pop it upside down, and we're just gonna do the one, two, three flip. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Whoop. It's a whole body movement. I'm gonna undo the sides. Pop that out. I'm gonna take off the bottom of the pan. Oh, and the parchment. It looks so, whoa. <laughs> it looks so pretty. You can see the pattern. Let's try a slice out. It looks so fluffy and beautiful, not too dense, which I love. A scoop of ice cream would be phenomenal with this, but I don't have any. Mm. Oh, that's so good. The almond and rhubarb work so perfectly together. It is like melt in your mouth, tender, it's a lovely, lovely consistency, and that rhubarb just pops. That is so freaking delicious. I hope you give it a try. The full recipe is in the caption below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more delicious recipes and lifestyle vlogs. I will see you soon, and I hope you have the best day. Bye.